Hello, and welcome to Senior Code Review Buddy. My name is Chris, and today I'm going to talk about when you should write unit tests and when you should be writing integration tests. It can be helpful to have a good sense of when you want to use each type of test to ensure that you are giving your code the right type of test coverage. It'll help speed up development as you won't need to go back and add missing coverage that someone identifies in a code review, and you won't have spent time on tests that weren't really needed. To start off, let's define what I mean by unit tests and integration tests. The definitions can vary from place to place, and sometimes there can be other types of tests as well, so I think it'll be helpful to get us all aligned first. Let's start with unit tests. At the most basic level, these are tests that are testing a single unit or component at a time. It's about making sure that this component in isolation reacts the way you expect for a given set of inputs. This component is probably just a single function, method, or class. You may have some other helpers that you're calling to get stuff set up for this test, but you're really only assessing the results of that one function, method, or class. If the test fails, there's usually only one place in the code you'll need to examine and fix. Unit tests are also generally fast to run because their setup is usually quite simple. They don't bring up multiple systems at the same time. If your code needs to interact with something that is a bit more work to set up, there's a good chance that you'll just be mocking it. For integration tests, it's about testing multiple components together. An integration test can't really just be a single component as then it's a unit test. In a sense, an integration test isn't really about testing if each component works correctly with the given inputs. Not because that's not important, but because that's a unit test. An integration test is about ensuring the various components are able to interact together correctly. This also means that, unlike a unit test, when an integration test fails, it may take some work to figure out which component needs to be fixed. Two components could work perfectly well in isolation, but their integration tests could fail because they made faulty assumptions about each other. So with those definitions, unit tests should be used to make sure your components work correctly, while integration tests should be used to determine if your components work correctly together. So with that in mind, I think it becomes a bit easier to figure out what tests you want to add for each change. Basically, whenever you are making a change, you will almost always want a unit test for that component to ensure that your change works the way you think it does. And then you should think about what other components it's interacting with. Did you add a new interaction? And if so, make sure those interactions are covered by an integration test. So while almost every PR should have unit tests, integration tests are more likely to just appear in changes that introduce a new interaction between components, or when you realize there's an interaction between some components that currently isn't covered by an integration test. So with that in mind, let's look through the main file of the deliberate practice app I'm working on and see what tests I think I should have added, which hopefully I did add when I wrote that initial code. So we'll just focus on this one file today. It is the main entry point for the deliberate practice command line interface. So as we go through, we've got select run mode as a function, run practice mode as a function, and main as a function. Yep, just those three. So let's start by looking at select run mode. This function prompts a user to select a run mode from run list, and then it returns the run mode. All right, yeah, this is a pretty easy place to start. Um, well, I think all we need for this is some unit tests. Although we are sort of fetching user input through this fetch input, it's really kind of its only connection to the outside world. The others are just sort of helper functions for it. And it's kind of basic to see that based on what the input coming in is, we should get a certain run mode. So. Seems like just having some tests to ensure the right inputs get mapped to the right outputs. That's all I think we need for this. So we'll go on to practice mode now. Okay, so it's a larger function and has a few more inputs. Okay, first we exit early if there are no activities. 
Um, then, as long as a user wants to practice an activity, we will randomly pick one, tell the user which one we picked, ask them how they did, save the results, and increase the number of activities done. And then when this is all done, we'll return the number of activities completed. So yeah, so this is a little more complex. We've got the interactions with activities, and we are saving stuff to practices. So let's start with what I'd consider for the unit tests here. So we do return the number of activities done, so I think we just want some unit tests around that. First, we'd want to make sure that if we don't pass in any activities, we return zero. Um, then I'd want to make sure if we don't try to practice any activities, we return zero. And then I'd want to do some number of activities and make sure that's the number we get back. So I think that does good for unit tests. And now if I was adding integration tests here, I think it kind of wouldn't be that different from above. Although I think what I care more about is examining that we're sort of getting the right values saved to practice. So probably wouldn't care about the cases where no activities are done, but I guess we would want to do some number of activities and make sure that we are calling practices and saving those results in the format that we are expecting. Okay, and I think that's it for it, so let's move on to main. So the main function is a bit smaller than the previous function, and it also doesn't return anything directly. So that's maybe a hint that we might not want to use unit test here. It's also not yeah, directly modifying any of the inputs that are getting passed in. So as this name, I think, suggests main, uh, this is the main function of the whole program right now. So that also kind of suggests that this feels more like an integration spot. So looking at this, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'd worry about unit tests. I don't know how much value we would add because it's not really direct stuff we can test for this. So let's just focus on integration tests. Basically, we've got two modes. We can either be in practice mode or evaluation mode. So I'd want to do one integration test for each of those. Um, with practice mode, since we sort of had seen how practice, yeah, run practice kind of works, I probably want to have a parameterized uh, integration test there. So try with you know, doing no practices, one practice, and two, since I think that'll hit sort of your main use cases. And yeah, I think with that, I think you're pretty good for that. So I think that covers sort of what I would do for unit tests and integration tests for this file. Now, I came up with those thoughts about what tests I should probably have without looking at my test files. So did I cover all the cases I thought of? Nope, I, I missed a few of them. And I'd recently written that code. So I think it's interesting to see that even after just taking a short break away from the code, coming back with a fresh set of eyes shows me a way that I can improve probably my test coverage of it, which is a good reminder that we can always improve. Thanks for watching. If you have any advice on when you'd add a unit test or an integration test, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. If you have any comments, code you'd like me to review, or ideas you'd like me to talk about, please leave a comment below or reach me at chris at seniorcodereviewbuddy.com. Thanks, and have a great day.